Good morning. Welcome to Parma Grace United Church of Christ at Home. My name is Mike Zabalski. We are now offering this weekly worship service on YouTube. We also have an online fellowship hour following worship. If you would like to join, please use the contact page on our church website, www.parmacreeseucc.org, to get more information. You can also add names to the prayer list by using the Submit a Prayer Request button on our website homepage. Remember, if you need pastoral care, please contact Pastor Kirk directly or use the contact page on our church website. It is our hope that this service of worship and the weekly meditation provide you with some comfort and stability in this time of great uncertainty. Parma Greece, United Church of Christ at home, sharing God's love wherever we are. Now, let us prepare our hearts, minds, and spirits for worship. Though there are rulers, presidents, kings, queens, God is the Lord of all life. In God we live, move, and have our being. God requires our faithfulness and our service. We reach out to others with the same kind of love with which God has touched our lives. Come, let us worship the Lord who is always with us. Let us praise God who walks daily by our side. Amen.
Let us pray together. Gracious God, be with us this day. You have made us in your image, and we belong to you alone. Therefore, we offer ourselves to you in service, love, and praise. Use us for the glory of your realm and for the good of your people. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. As this word is read, and the words are said, open our ears to hear the message of the gospel, not in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit with full conviction. In so hearing, inspire us to respond as living examples of the persons you call us to be before you and all the world. Amen. Our gospel lesson this morning is from the book of Exodus, chapter 33, verses 12 through 23. Moses said to the Lord, See, you have said to me, Bring up this people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name, and you have also found favor in my sight. Now, if I have found favor in your sight, show me your ways so that I may know you and find favor in your sight. Consider too that this nation is your people. He said, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. And he said to him, if your presence will not go, do not carry us up from here. For how shall it be known that I have found favor in your sight? I and your people, unless you go with us. In this way, we shall be distinct, I and your people, from every people on the face of the earth. The Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing that you have asked, for you have found favor in my sight, and I know you by name. Moses said, show me your glory, I pray. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you and will proclaim before you the name, the Lord. And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. But, he said, you cannot see my face for no one shall see me and live. And the Lord continued, See, there is a place by me where you shall stand on the rock. And while my glory passes by, I will put you in a cleft of the rock. And I will cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will take away my hand and you shall see my back but my face shall not be seen. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord according to St. Matthew. Then the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap him in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth and show deference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin you use for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, Whose head is on this, and whose title? They answered, The emperor's. 
And then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. The Gospel of our Lord. Grace and peace to you from our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, those many years ago, I was and still am a Bob Dylan fan. So as I read this week's gospel, couldn't help hearing in my head, you may be an ambassador to England or France. You may like to gamble. You may like to dance. You may be the heavyweight champion of the world. You may be a socialite with long string of pearls. But you're going to have to serve somebody, yes indeed. You're going to have to serve somebody. It may be the devil, or it may be the Lord, but you're going to have to serve somebody. Gotta Serve Somebody was the lead song in his 1979 album, Slow Train Coming, and it was his last hit single. It was a Grammy Award for the best male rock vocal for the year as well. This song also marked Bob Dylan's conversion to Christianity from Judaism. You're going to have to serve somebody, wrote Dylan, and he now knew who he would be serving, the Lord Jesus Christ. It came to mind because of Jesus' oft-quoted words in response to the trick question from the Pharisees and Herodians. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? Give, there to the, give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God. Like all the recent texts we have been hearing from St. Matthew, this one needs a lot of context and background explanation. Jews in the first century Palestine paid a lot of taxes. There was a temple tax. There were also land taxes custom and trade taxes, to name but a few. The tax in this text was an additional tax, one particularly despised by the Jews. It was called the imperial tax, required as a tribute to Rome to support the Roman Empire's occupation of Israel. Think of that for a moment. The first century Jews were required to pay their oppressors a yearly tax to support their own oppression. Of course, not everyone saw the tax that way. The Herodians <clears throat> were local sympathizers with the Roman rulers. They were a family political party related to King Herod, the local puppet ruler supported by the Romans. Some folks think the Apostle Paul came from this family the Herodians supported the imperial tax. They benefited from it. The Pharisees, also a political party, as well as religious scholars, did not have much use for the imperial tax, but they probably grudgingly supported it since it also helped keep them in power. And as far as Matthew was concerned, the Pharisees would do anything to try to trap Jesus. The imperial tax was opposed by most, if not all, of Jesus' followers. Many of them were nationalists who found the imperial tax particularly offensive, since it daily reminded them of their humiliation and occupation by the Roman Empire. Now, the imperial tax should have been a problem for the Pharisees, too, and not only for political reasons. A coin engraved with the picture of the Emperor Caesar Tiberius and a proclamation of his divinity, which broke the first two commandments. Thus, in Jesus' time, any conversation about the empirical tax was very divisive and immediately revealed where one stood in relation to Rome and to faith. And that is how the Herodians and the Pharisees got together to trap Jesus. Normally they did not get along, but on this occasion they were united in their desire to trap Jesus. 
Jesus had just entered Jerusalem, and the people loved him. Now Jesus was preaching in the temple and stirring up all kinds of trouble for these status quo folks. So together the Herodians and Pharisees decided to trap Jesus with their question about the imperial tax. Jesus' foes thought they had Jesus trapped. If Jesus answered one way, if he advocated for paying the tax, he would disappoint his followers. If he advocated not paying this tax, he would be in trouble with the Roman rulers. They thought they had him. But as we know, Jesus not only invaded, evaded their trap, he trapped them in their own question. Whose face is on the coin, Jesus asked. Perhaps over eager to advance their own plot, Jesus' opponents forgot that by showing the coin with the emperor's image on it, they betrayed their own complicity with the Roman system. Then Jesus asked whose image and proclamation adorned the coin. The emperor's, they answered. Everyone in attendance knew the commandments, and they knew that Jesus had just trapped the trappers in their own blasphemy according to Jewish law. And that makes Jesus' response even more biting. Give therefore to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God that the things that are God. Jesus turned the table, so to speak, on the questioners. With just a few words, Jesus revealed the truth about his would-be accusers and simultaneously called them to a higher accountability and fidelity than they ever imagined possible. That's where Bob Dylan's song comes in. You got to serve somebody. Jesus made it absolutely clear who he served. Might Jesus also be talking to us? He's not trapping us, of course. But Jesus is inviting us to declare our allegiance to God. Thus, perhaps the key question here is not whose image is on the coin, but rather whose image is on us. Whose image is in our hearts? Jesus is inviting us to declare our allegiance to God. Often this text is interpreted to present the dichotomy in our lives that we have duties both to God and country. And while that is so, I believe Jesus is talking here primarily about our duty to God. Many of us have strong political views. May we be Democrats, Republicans, or Independents. But before and above any of these, we, you and I, are Christians, followers of Jesus Christ. And Jesus is or should be our first loyalty above, above all others. Jesus raises important questions for us in this text, and he does not give us pet answers. There are elements in our lives that are indeed part of the world today and should be rendered to Caesar, as the text states. But there are other parts of our lives our very persons, our very selves, that belong to God alone. If we remember that, all of life can take on a greater focus and meaning. We belong not to anything of the world. We belong to God. And this means that no matter what we may do or say, no matter where we may go, no matter what, we may, what may happen to us, we are first and foremost and forever God's own beloved children. And if we believe this and live this, God will shape all we say and do and how we live. But how do we make a difference in the name of Jesus? The words are simple, but the actions are difficult. Jesus gave us the great commandments. Love your, the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. And we are to love our neighbor as ourselves. 
and on this rest all of the law and the prophets. We belong to God. We are God's beloved children. All of us, every person on this planet. You're going to have to serve somebody. And with Bob Dylan, we know who we serve. We are Christians. We serve Christ. And that should shape how we serve Caesar. We belong to God. As Jimmy Carter once said, My faith demands, and this is not optional, My faith demands that I do whatever I can, wherever I can, as long as I can, with whatever I have to make a difference. We are God's children. Our task is to believe that and to live it. Amen. Let us be in the spirit of prayer. Lord God, we give you thanks for all your gifts to us, for daily food, for health, for each breath we take, for freedom to choose, and for the gifts of your word, your power, and your love. Our hearts are truly overwhelmed, O oh God, when we consider how you have entrusted so much to us. May we be worthy of that trust. May we be a people who are unafraid to live as fully and as richly as you would want us to live. Help us, O oh God, as followers of Jesus, to multiply all that you have given us to risk spreading your word and perhaps see it misunderstood, to gamble by loving those whom others think worthy only of hate, to take chances by doing good to those who have not done good to us. Help us be faith-filled and desire to increase your glory and your goodness in this world. Make us people who share in both word and deed that which you have given to us. We pray for the church gathered by your Spirit both here and around the world, that it may encourage all of its members to discover, develop, and use all their gifts, those of nature and those of grace. We pray for those who are poor in body or in spirit, for those oppressed and heavy laden, for those sick or who despair. Minister by your Spirit and by us, to all those for whom we have prayed, and help us walk faithfully in the path of our Lord Jesus Christ, who taught us to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
God's grace, go forth to declare God's glory, care for one another in the name of Christ. And may God tuck us securely into the cleft of the rock of our salvation, Jesus Christ. May we sense the inexpressible awe of God's glory passing over us. And may we rest in the peace that passes all understanding, now and forevermore. Amen.